good job, Black and Indy. We are back, still season six, episode seven or eight, one of the two. Um, as always, my name is Isaiah. I'm Ty Kira. And this is Black and Indy. So for this episode, y'all, we have a, um, a spe I'm not gonna say special guest because he's not special, he's not important either. But he's a guest nonetheless. <laughs> and one thing about this individual is that he is always here before we start filming our shows. But as he told me earlier today, he does not watch our episodes. I want y'all to keep that in mind. Wow, okay. Wow, isn't that a violation? Right, right. Regardless, I was kidding. I'm going to cut the introduction <laughs> off right there. I would like to unpleasantly welcome Eddie Davis, the 65th. <clears throat> How y'all doing? My Just name's little, Eddie. Little background, little, little background. background. Um, I'm a senior here. Um, I've done a lot of here. I have a startup. Um, I currently work for Disney. That's where I'm working in New York right after I graduate. So pretty excited. I'm glad to be on uh, Black and ND. Uh, privileged guest. Uh, special guest, very important, obviously, <laughs> as uh, you probably have heard. Um, and I am around a lot, so I'm, I'm glad to finally be here. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into this, just tell us first and foremost, why do you not watch our episodes? See, <clears throat> it's really nothing personal. Because, see, I have seen some episodes, but I'll see the ones that I'm actually here, mm -hmm. like, live and in person for. Mm -hmm. So I have watched them, mm -hmm. just not online, if that makes sense. I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. But you know, if you watch it online, you could also help us get our views up, get the likes up, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't see you sharing our stuff on Instagram. Yeah, like I, don't, you would. I don't peep that either. See, I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get caught lacking. Um, <laughs> see, honestly, I don't have a good explanation for that one. I'm not going to lie. However, I can promise moving forward that I will. Y'all if y'all follow heard me back, mm -hmm. if y'all peep his socials and he don't repost nothing, please get on him. <laughs> Cancel me. Yes, cancel him. Cancel him. Does anyone deserve to be to be canceled? It is this man right here. But we're going to skip past all the little theatrics. It is a special episode that we have planned. And so without further ado, we want to get into it. So you're a senior. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience here at Notre Dame, especially being black? You know, what have been some of the some of the ups, maybe some of the downs in that experience? Yeah, that's a good question. So a lot of the ups, you know, just getting here, obviously not that many black people in general. Um, my roommate in my dorm, because I was black, I was the only black guy in my dorm freshman year, uh, Dunn Hall. He was Asian and South Korean, so like we were both minorities. I got along pretty well with him, and I also came here with two other seniors, Tyler Wilson and Mark Barnes, uh, from my high school. And I've known them each for at least 11 years, you know, at that point. So I had them to help me out. So I was very fortunate. I know a lot of black people come here, you know, on their own which kind of sucks and you know it's really unfortunate so I was very fortunate to have them um, one thing I noticed though is like being black here you you feel it you know you feel it in the classrooms uh, you could be the only one you know maybe there's another one in the classroom with you you feel it just walking around you can tell like you know people might look at you differently people might like see you differently overall <clears throat> and even like now I feel like there is somewhat of a divide too between the African community and like the black community because I feel like there are definitely more <coughs> like Africans or people that are born directly in Africa or at least you know a mom or a dad was someone the family was whereas like for me it's like I don't even I've never been to Africa I don't even know <coughs> where my family may be from in Africa because like obviously they were slaves so it's somewhat of a cultural divide there too and I feel like the American like black experience is unique to some extent and not having that community here be as prominent is something I've definitely felt as well. Absolutely, and I think that's important to really, you know, touch on. And I think going into that, another thing to kind of dive a little bit deeper into the experience. So what's your major again, right? Just uh, political science. Political science. So in your time as a political science major, have you felt any sort of like uncomfortability in the classroom and certain discussions, especially because we know how political, political science discussions mm -hmm. really get. <clears throat> You know, we know how socially aware they get. Do you have any times where, you know, maybe you felt like if you were the only black person in class, you felt like you were outnumbered, you maybe couldn't share your real experience or your real feelings on certain topics? Yeah, so actually, like, uh, about three weeks ago, I was in a, um, a discussion class for American politics, and I actually was in that situation where it was me against this one other guy, and everyone else, <clears throat> everyone else claimed they felt too uncomfortable to speak up, but I was the only black person in the class. And so I had to basically 
go against him. He was trying to tell me that uh, racism, at least uh, systemic racism, didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so it was basically me showing him how it does <clears throat> versus him like basically telling me that you know he doesn't feel that he's affected he didn't feel that he's been you know racist he didn't feel that like you know it's fair for me to even say the idea that it does exist but everyone else in the class just sort of like stood there didn't say anything no one like took my side and no one took his side it was just me versus him and at the end of the day the teacher had to pull me and him after class and tell us that like it was too uncomfortable um, and that we made the people in class so uncomfortable that they really don't want to continue having discussions in that format, wow. which is crazy. Mm. So it's like, <clears throat> stuff like that just showed me, it's like, you know, a lot of people think, man, things have got along, gone along so far, this, that, et cetera. Not really. Like, <clears throat> I feel like maybe because of cancel culture, people don't want to say anything. That doesn't mean that, you know, they're not thinking the same. Mm. So I think that's really important. That I'm glad I had that experience so overall, because I can at least respect the other guy for speaking up. You know, he had a point that he believed in, he spoke on it. I can respect that a lot more than, you know, people just being silent. So. That's an experience, like, personally, I've never had in my courses. You know, like, there's a lot of times where people are uncomfortable to have really political or socially aware conversations, but at the same time, I've never had an experience where it's like a back and forth like that where so many people are just so uncomfortable that it becomes an issue like that. Like, that's something that's right. new to me. Like, I'm not surprised at it whatsoever because you know, it's Notre Dame. It is what it is. But I'm just, like, that shocks me. I'm sure it's probably shocking to some of the viewers too. You know, like, that's something that really needs to be talked about. And I'm glad that you're here to really speak up on that and use this platform to share another experience that hopefully some of the people in the class may see, professors may see, so that they can really figure out how do we have these conversations uncomfortable conversations that can also still be productive even when we have two different people with different viewpoints, you know, going back and forth like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, no matter what, uncomfortable conversations need to be had. Mm -hmm. We cannot always mm -hmm. go through day-to-day -day thinking everything's going to be easy, always wanting to take the easy route. Conversation like that, everyone needs to witness or at least be a part of it, whether you're talking or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may be uncomfortable, but it's still something that's necessary. Mm -hmm. And I understand why the professor would have put you guys apart, because I guess it may have gotten a little intense, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. But for the other students, you're going to be just fine. You probably learned some tips, learned some things that you didn't know, and you probably agreed with some of the things, but just didn't want to open up and be looked at in a different way. But, yeah. Um, what's one of your favorite best memories so far of being at Notre Dame? <clears throat> okay, yeah, to, to switch it up a little bit, I'd say my best memory was probably, so freshman year, um, I kind of have two, so I'll say two. So freshman year, I kind of like, I walked on the track team, even though I did it for like a year, uh, you know, COVID kind of messed it up a little bit and I got injured, but it was still a great experience, great accomplishment for me, because um, I really want to be an athlete here, and I gave up that coming here from high school, you know, and I just came here as a student, so I was, it was sort of like me proving something to myself. Um, another good memory here overall, I'd say it wasn't, technically it wasn't here, but it was studying abroad. Yeah, it really opened my eyes um, in ways that it's hard to be, for me to even put in words. I kind of just like, I had to grow up a lot. I had to like, you know, learn somewhat of like a new language a little bit. I had to learn Italian because I was in Rome. <clears throat> so I had to like communicate with other people in like a different language. It was just like, it helped me grow a lot. And so I do have Notre Dame to thank for that too. And I do think, um, you know, it's really all about like taking advantage. Because if you know, all the resources are there for you to make this experience really fruitful. But if you don't take advantage, then it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of on you. So like, I've been trying my best, <laughs> my absolute best to take advantage of like everything I can. You know, I meet a lot of people, you know that, oh. you see me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I use the network when I can. Um, I join clubs, I do different experiences, I studied abroad. So it's, you know, that's kind of how I see my experience here. So with that, as a senior, what advice would you give to um, underclassmen <clears throat> of experiences or things that they should do, things that they should not do, or anything that you feel like is just necessary for underclassmen to know moving forward um, in their academic experience here at Notre Dame? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the biggest thing for me is 
a lot of people like to say, you know, and this may be a little controversial, but a lot of people like to say you have so much time. You know, you have four years, whatever, whatever. You do not have a lot of time. Time goes by like, like that. So it's kind of like, you know, you need to pretend as if, you know, you're running out of time. Even if you just get here as a freshman, you need to do everything you can. Meet all the people you can, have all the experiences you can, you know, go after that internship early as soon as you can. Make every summer count. You know, make every second here count because once you get to like my age as a senior, you kind of realize that like, you know, maybe there's more you could have done. And I feel like I've done a lot, but I feel, I still feel like there's so much more I could have done had I had that mindset. Because you know, you, you are here for a reason. You're here to enjoy yourself, which is sure it's college, but you're also here to take care of business, especially being black for one. You can't afford to just come here and, you know, like a do 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 and just like go to class and go through the motions and keep to yourself and not do anything else. You need to do something more. You know, use the fact that you're here to like help, you know, your community, not just here, but you know, back home, like outside of like Notre Dame. Because if you don't do that, then it's kind of like it's on you for like wasting some of your time here and being a little selfish with it. At least that's how I see it. Yeah. So, absolutely. I guess transitioning from that. Now you spoke on having a, a startup, right? Tell us a little bit more about that startup and sort of what is it, what do you do, what are the goals, what's the purpose of it? Kind of just go into that. Yeah, so right now um, I'm working on this project. We're calling it uh, Hot Seats. Uh, basically like a, it's a reservation reselling platform so you can have like a time slot for an event or even a restaurant, barbershop, what have you. Anything you, there's basically a, inside your head like a, a line for you can, as a customer, if you're not going to make it, or let's say you're leaving a game early or something like that, you can sell it to another customer mm. for pure profit. Wow. And the business, the business can get a cut of that. Mm. The business gets pure profit, the customer gets pure profit, and the customer that is receiving the ticket or time slot, they get their convenience. And so we're talking to tickets.com right now, actually, wow. um, and working on like how we can integrate into their system to allow people let's say in like the fourth quarter of a game to like sell like that spot, like that seat. It could be like a court size seat. Last quarter of an NBA game, you know, they could sell it to someone else that, you know, maybe they just want to buy it for that quarter so it's cheaper, it's affordable for them and they get the experience that they want. So that's kind of like our mission with it overall. But I've done many different projects over the years. Um, when COVID happened, for me, it was kind of like a, a catalyst. It's what kind of like got me um, in the entrepreneurial mindset. Because before that, I was here, I was just messing around, going through the flow, um, and I wasn't really doing the best I could have done. But then COVID happened and kind of like got me in the right mental space. So since then, I've been working on entrepreneurship, and right now, that's, that's my latest project. That's cool. That's some black excellence right, right. there, y'all. Like, y'all need to make sure, like, y'all really hearing that. I don't, I don't care if I got to rewind that real quick <laughs> and, you know, play through it. But that's big, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's always good to see black people doing amazing things like that. And especially, I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to, you know, to share that for you to, I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to give you the platform to share that, you know, what you're working on because a lot of the times our black accomplishments, they go overlooked, they go unheard. And so I'm, I'm happy that you're doing something like that because, you know, black entrepreneurship is, it's, it's an amazing thing, like it really is. You know, we're a very talented, very unique people. Right. Like that's something I would have never thought about something like that. Exactly. How did you yeah. end up thinking about that? Like I said, man, it, COVID, like for some people, COVID was like, you know, a down point for them because like, you know, they didn't, have, they didn't have anything to do. They were lost for me. It was like, it really got my head straight. Like I was not thinking straight before COVID. I wasn't focused and COVID just forced me to sit down and reflect on what I really wanted to do, like what my passions really are. That's when I like realized, like, shoot, like entrepreneurship, like, I think I really want to do that. Mm. And they have the Idea Center here on campus. I hadn't even like reached out to them. So during COVID, I was in constant communication. Like, you know, I, and I failed a lot. I'll admit, I'll be the first to admit, I, I failed so much. Like I first pitched my idea to them during COVID and they were laughing at it, like wow. right after my pitch. Mm. Rightfully so, because <laughs> it was really bad. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just was spitballing it. The next thing you know, it's like, you know, it helped me learn so much after failing so much early on to where I am now, you know, and I've accomplished a good amount and that's all credit to what I did then. Mm -hmm. 
So it's kind of been my journey here. That's a big takeaway right there too. Like even if you fail, you keep on working because you never know what that failure will take you. Exactly, and I know a lot of people who have all these amazing ideas and who want to do startups, but because they're so afraid to fail, they don't want to take the first step. Actually, can I put a plug in really quick? Absolutely. So I'm with the Idea Center, I'm running my own event on April 1st. Mm -hmm. um, where's the cameras on me? Right. Yeah, April 1st, 1 to 3 at the Idea Center. My event, you know, two hours, quick two hours, you can win Domer dollars from 250 to 500, you know, just for you. Best idea, 60 second pitch, you know, take it or leave it, put it all on the table, come join me. Like a little like, kind of like Shark Tank. Right, look. Basically, yeah, yeah. I like that. For sure, for sure. I think um, that's a, kind of a, another great segue to get into one of the last things I personally wanted to ask. You can add anything you want to. So you talked about in your introduction how once you graduate, you'll be working at Disney. Tell us about that Tell us about the opportunity, that experience, and kind of like what led up to that. Yeah, so I was at um, this networking event um, during the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. <clears throat> this was like a year ago after I came back from being abroad in Rome. And I remember my, my mom and uh, some of my classmates were saying, hey, you should probably go to this event, whatever. And I, I was really like, nah, I don't, I don't think I should. I really don't feel like. But there were Disney execs at the event. So I ended up going. Could be an opportunity, could not be. I went. Um, they were pretty impressed with me. And my high school actually did a partnership with Disney. And so they had to select two or three people for interns. And like I was fortunate enough after some interviews to be selected for the summer. So I get to my summer internship. They said a full-time job wasn't guaranteed, but that should be my personal goal for the internship. So I got there and I, I knew I had to handle business, but I, the problem with that was I was also doing my startup stuff at the time. So I was literally in Houston at an accelerator for my startup, which is a 12 week program to help like get things launched off. And so I was doing that and Disney at the same time, like remote. And so, but I ended up, you know, long story short, helping my organization within Disney identify like three or four key problems that they were having. And I like gave my solutions, which were pretty good. And the president of my organization ended up seeing what I produced. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't know she would see it, but she ended up seeing it. And so she, putting a really good word for me, uh, apparently, to my managers over the internship. And they put a nigga word for me to the recruiters. And so I didn't even apply for anything, actually. Like, I was just here last semester. I was lifting weights in the Smith Center. <laughs> it was like 9.30 PM at night, I swear. It was like 9.30 or even later. I get a, a call from the recruiter. I'm like, dang, why is he calling me right now? It can't be good news, because I have an extended internship this whole year. So I thought maybe I did something wrong in the internship. Maybe that's why he's calling me. So I answer, I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, you know, we got a full-time offer for you. Wow. I think I, I muted it and I was like, oh, and I started <laughs> dabbing people off. <laughs> and I unmuted it and I was like, <clears throat> I had to tell everybody to be quiet. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, I'll look at it, get back to me when you can, blah, blah. Ended up accepting it and I've had a job since then. And so what exactly do you do and what would you be doing once you graduate? So I'll be helping sell Disney's ad space to brands like, you know, you have Coca-Cola, you know, all the way down to like Jimmy John's, you know, Subway, uh, McDonald's. They all buy ad space on Disney's properties like ABC, Disney Plus Now, ESPN, Hulu, um, you know, even Nat Geo. So like it's pretty pretty cool like making those relationships with the brands as well but also just learning more about like digital marketing and stuff like that and so i actually picked up the digital marketing minor here like a year ago fortunately because it gave me the background during my internship to excel and then now like that's literally what i'm going to be doing so it's crazy how things kind of work out like that yeah, like that. <laughs> that's a blessing for real i like yeah. i hope i can get some of that look i need i need something please yeah and go work at Disney or something. <laughs> it's all about fortune. You know, luck, like you you prepare for an opportunity, you're gonna need fortune at some point. Mm -hmm. But like you'll take it best advantage of it if you're prepared. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm like I'm smiling right now, but I'm telling you, like this smile is like amplified by fifty times like inside. Like I'm I'm so happy for you and I'm happy for all the work that you're doing. And I'm happy that 
they just excelling so much, man. I just I love to see us excel, and I love to see us be so successful. And that's such a big thing for me. I love seeing uh, uh, you know, people like us excelling in a world where we're not always expected to excel. <laughs> you, know, expe you know, like that's that's big for me. You got anything you wanna? Uh, after hearing that, I ain't got nothing else to ask. <laughs> I, look, I'm trying to get like you. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't know. I ain't got no other questions. I guess you know. So we've been a little serious, you know, a little bit this first uh, part of this interview. I kind of want to transition a little bit. I want to ask you, since you're like the biggest Black in the D fan, apparently. <laughs> right. What has been some things that you've seen on our show that you really want to talk about or that you wanted to provide mm -hmm. input? Because you know you've been here for a lot of our episodes at the beginning. I have. So you know a lot of our topics, you know a lot of our stuff, and you always say, oh man, if I was on this show, I'd, I'd say this. I'd do <laughs> I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. Go ahead and say what you want to say. Okay, um, well, one of the shows, um, and you know this, uh, I think y'all were talking about Kanye um, <laughs> and everything that he was doing. Um, and I want to preface this, but I don't want to get canceled. So. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, between me and my friends who won't be named, uh, <laughs> we, um, we talked about this issue, and there's a lot of different facets obviously like you know what Kanye means to the black community we all know that we've been known that mm -hmm. um but then after a certain point you know I think a lot of people in the black community are sort of seeing like a a distance come between them and Kanye because mm -hmm. of certain things he's done I think it started with like the you know him his support of Donald Trump mm -hmm. it's where it started but I think a lot of people didn't care as much because like if you're really good at something like, he's really good at making music mm -hmm. A lot of people are gonna overlook everything else mm -hmm. that like may be involved in your life. You know, regardless of like what cancel culture is capable of or whatever. However, once it started to get more towards the anti Semitism and, you know, stuff he's been saying, stuff like that, I think a lot of people are really starting to second guess. A lot of people, including me, so we starting to second guess like if they should support Kanye, if they should still be a fan. Because mm -hmm. they know what he stands for and they know how he thinks. Um, then there's also the argument that, you know, maybe he's just going crazy. I mean, there's a potential <laughs> yeah. that, like, you know, he could be mentally ill. So that's something you also have to consider as well. Maybe it's not, he's not the same person he was all those years ago. Maybe that's why he's changing. So I don't know what you guys think about that. Um, I think there's some Kardashians. I like, <laughs> we could get into that. That's a whole, I have a whole theory about how the Kardashians twist the minds of our fellow brothers that they end up trapping. Mm -hmm. But that's, mm -hmm. Reggie Bush didn't get twisted though. What? Reggie Bush? I mean, I, I haven't heard anything about Reggie Bush. So. <laughs> you got out? Yeah, he's don't. Still, one of the few. The very I think few. I think he's a commentator now, I see. Yeah, I think he's on what, ESPN Game Day? I think so, yeah. He's doing pretty good. He's doing all right. He's like the only one, I would say. Yeah, his career was kind of short. Is that, yeah. He has a little bit going on. He, he got something, you know. He got out. He ain't crazy, so. Yeah, it's a messed up situation between, you know, and then his family's being split up now too, because he has kids, which, I mean, again, me and my friends who won't be named, um, we believe that was a really bad decision, honestly, uh, to start a family with someone like that, uh, you know, who you kind of know where like, you know, things are going. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of know like, there's just history there of like, you know, people who have like, done that and there's a reason mm -hmm. that, like they got out I mean they have a whole show yeah mm -hmm. I mean everything's too public it's just there's a lot going on there I think what he claims to stand for didn't really match up with how he's acting mm -hmm. which I think has been a trend with him lately so but o overall though I mean obviously his music is still good but I think him as a person is what we need to like reconsider our support of as a community mm -hmm. and that's just my opinion I think going off of that you talked about like separating the artists from the music. Do you think that there's certain lines where like you can no longer do that? Like one of them, you know, like one of the main people in our community, R. Kelly, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? One of the most talented artists of all time. He was also doing a lot of stuff he shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. Do you think there becomes a point in time where I'm not comparing R. Kelly to Kanye? That's a crazy comparison. That's a. But you know, it, it comes to a point in time where like artists may do some things where you feel like you have a difficult time separating them from the music. Do you think that that's something where? There's other artists that, that really show that. Do you think that Kanye, we're having a, a difficult time like figuring out how do we like, separate him and everything he's saying from his music? Yeah, no, well, I feel like Kanye's a little different than R. Kelly. 
Mm. For sure. Yeah. R. Kelly. <laughs> yeah, R. Kelly is um to definitely they definitely at that point you have to like combine mm. the artist and the music because you know at that point it's like what you're doing kind of exceeds any anything that else could that could have been going on. Mm. With Kanye though, I know some people, I know some of his fans that are pretty die hard think a lot of the things he's saying is like are misunderstood. I know you, a lot of the viewers may also believe that. It's like, you know, maybe he's like, Mr. Ill, or maybe like, you know, we just aren't getting what he's saying. Maybe there's some truth to what he's saying. Who knows? I personally don't agree with that. Um, in my opinion, is, you know, at this point, as he continues to do what he's been doing, I think you have to get closer to combining, you know, his arts with like who he is as a person. Um, but obviously, there are still a lot of people that don't. And I can understand what they're saying. I can at least try to see things from their perspective um because you, you when you when you really love someone so much you've been a diehard fan for them for so long maybe you don't see everything or maybe you see more than what i could see i don't know but in my opinion i think it's getting to that point where like people might have to like you know separate themselves absolutely you ain't got to tell me i separated myself from kanye a long time ago i his music I bump a few here and there, but him, every time he come up on the news or something, I immediately tune out. I do not care. Mm. So, I agree with what you said. We need to separate. I've separated. Let's look at what they be doing, what they be saying, because words have intentions, and uh, he means what he says. So. Now, how do you feel about people still buying like Yeezys and like stuff from like, his brand? Then, Honestly, my opinion on that is, unless you can afford. Unless you make over 100K, you shouldn't be buying Yeezys. Mm. That's my that's my opinion. You Especially if you're me. black. <laughs> Especially if you're black. That's oh. the whole point. Kanye is kind of weird. It's kind of ironic because I feel like he's always talking about like the black community. We do this. We have these habits, and we shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z. And I feel like one of the things I've heard him talk about pretty often is like our like buying power. A lot of people talk about like the black buying power that exists. So what we should be doing with that is buying things that we actually need, mm. you know, things that are like of a higher order, not like, you know, like Yeezys. Now, if you can afford it, you can afford it. Mm. But like, there's a big, like, you know, gap as far as like, you know, blacks in America when it comes to like wealth. Mm. And so if you look at that, it's like, you look at people, we should not be able to afford Yeezys. But the people that will complain about not being able to afford anything will somehow find a way to get Yeezys doesn't make any sense I get I get like okay graphic shirts I buy graphic shirts that's fine but shoes anything that costs over for me my limit is like I would say it's probably gonna sound crazy to some people my limit is probably 200 if something costs over 200 if something costs over 200 I'm not getting it unless it's something I need I don't need shoes that cost over 200 these are Brooks shoes that I have on I mean I, I didn't even know about this brand until I just saw them in and Dick's Sporting Goods home over the winter break. I didn't even, I just got them, they were cheap. They served their need, running. But like, I get it, you know, some people are into shoes. So there is that argument that like, if you need, oh, uh, yeah. Like here, I got some but I don't spend over 200 because <laughs> I'm know, spending kids. I, I understand. Kids, so I save my money. And you know, I understand if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. But I, I get that. But I don't go and buy like, here, like everywhere, just cause I can, which I can't. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you if can, hey, you living like that. And yeah. if I can, maybe. But I'm not gonna be spending. T I don't spend over two hundred two thirty is my max because okay. I have little feet. That's that's. So I saying. shouldn't have to be spending that much money. But even if I had to, not on no pair of Yeezys. There's nothing really. I don't like Yeezys. If y'all don't get the vibe that I'm throwing out, I hate Yeezys. Mm. They're ugly to me. <laughs> I've heard they're comfortable. I don't know. I will never find out. Mm. But I would never never waste any money on you nah. got to use the buying power wisely so if you don't want to support Kanye that's a great way to to do so exactly absolutely and I think Chaz, we have time for one more thing do you have any other episodes or another episode that you feel like really stood out that you want to not even an episode wait? just any topic that you oh, yeah, just for sure. any, any topic talk about any and get off topic? your chest <sighs> mm. controversial or not it's okay don't controversial cancel controversial or not <laughs> I would say um I will say that I think the black people here should be, I just want to clarify, should be as honest as possible when it comes to like their 
real experience here because I have seen a lot of black people in general talk to other people, uh, especially if like they're of another race, about their experience here, even if it's like alumni, no matter who it is, and they'll kind of sugarcoat everything, uh, make it seem like, you know, there wasn't anything wrong with the experience at all. They're like really enjoying it. Um, they didn't have to go through anything. They were never uncomfortable, which I think if you talk to any black person I know, which I know basically, just like y'all do, every black person here, they would never say that. Mm. They would say that they're uncomfortable mm. a lot. They've definitely had microaggressions. They've definitely had a lot of experiences that they probably could have gone without. Mm. So I think the more honest we are about that, maybe the more, you know, the higher chance of it like changing mm. is like not present. Because I think we can be honest with that about like other people here too, that are like currently here with students. I mean, maybe they would act differently. Like, maybe they'd at least consider, like, you know, the fact that, like, you know, we have a different experience than them. Because I've talked to a lot of them, and they really don't think that. They really think that, like, we have the same experience, which is crazy to us. But, like, maybe they don't understand. Because, like, why would they? So I think that honesty piece for us is, like, that's, like, the only thing we have to do. I'm not saying it's, like, our fault. But I'm saying that, like, it, it is somewhat our responsibility to tell our truth, like, our truth. Because, like, only we can know. Yep. <laughs> Just that, giving that vibe. Ooh, I'm wow. Saying, yeah, that's definitely, I'm going to put that on the, that's going to be on Instagram. Like, yeah, 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 I like yeah. that. I like um, that. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, you know, and that's why, that's what I love about this show. You know, we're able to really tell our, our experiences. We're able to tell everything that we go through. And, you know, it's uncensored, unfiltered. Like, this is what it is, and we call it out. And that's what I love about it, you know, because, yep. like you said, there's definitely some black students out there that really do sugarcoat the experience. And if we want to create change, if we want to see things change on this campus, we can't sugarcoat things. Because as long as we do, people are just going to think that everything is okay, everything's all, all good, whenever we know that really it's not. So I appreciate you saying that for sure. Yeah. I agree, because I don't sugarcoat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have time for that. I need to get straight to the point, and I have to let you know what it is and why I think it's this way and what you can do to change it. And if none of us are going to speak out about it, change ain't going to happen. So. <laughs> I agree. Like, you got anything else you want to add? Yeah, no, no, I definitely agree. Like, just like the example of my class. Yeah. Like, you know, if you don't speak, you don't make people uncomfortable. You know, people are thinking with it, whatever they're thinking, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're not going to change. You're not going to change that, but just like not hearing their opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, at least if like y'all have a conversation, even if they disagree fully with what you say, every single point, at least y'all having the conversation. At least they're hearing what you're saying. Right. So I think there's some value in that, honestly. Absolutely. And I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been a great episode. I guess you're a special guest now. Like, I guess right, I you was over here hating in the beginning. Now he's all cheesy. I got to give you a little respect. Now. An important. <laughs> An important. <laughs> right, right. You know, right. Like, I'll give it to him now. Um, that's going to wrap it up for us, y'all. As always, we love y'all. You already know black is beautiful, black is love, and black is excellence. And we out.